Hey friends, today I'm going to be talking about Solidity vulnerabilities with Delegate Call and how it can be used to exploit contracts if done incorrectly. So let's get started. First contract here is uh, going to be the external library contract and you can see that it just has a owner address and a function called take ownership where it uses the sender and calls and sets it to the owner. The vulnerable contract will also have a owner variable as well as a reference to the external library. So when it gets constructed, it's going to set the owner to the sender and the library to the external library. And we just have a fallback function here. So if anything calls this vulnerable contract, it's going to hit this fallback and it's going to delegate that call out to the library, uh, passing in the message data from the sender. So how can this kind of be exploited? So the attacker is going to have a reference to the vulnerable contract and it's going to have an attack function where it calls the vulnerable contract and then passes it a encoded uh, version of the take ownership function. So when we hit the vulnerable contract, it's going to come in here, pass that, pass that uh, message data to the external library and the external library is going to say, hey, I'll take ownership and the message that sender will now become the owner. So the reason that this is vulnerable is the call delegate actually passes along the context. So it passes along the sender as well as the storage variables of the contract. So when it's doing this delegate call to the external library, it's actually setting the owner on the vulnerable contract and not the owner of the library. So let's kind of see what this takes. Let's see what this looks like. Come over here and compile this real quick. And now if we come over here and we can deploy the external library, grab its contract address, paste that into the vulnerable one, deploy the vulnerable contract, and then grab the vulnerable contract's address, paste that in for the attacker, and deploy. So if we take a quick look at the vulnerable contract and we see who the owner is, we can see that the owner is 5v38. And if we go and attack it, we can see the attack was successful. And now if we look at who the owner is, we can see that the owner is F8E8, which is this contract here, F8E. So one way to alleviate this is to use external contracts that don't manage state. It kind of helps alleviate this overall issue. So let's take a look at another one that I think is a little more interesting, a little more complex. So this one deals with the vulnerability of the call delegate uh, messing with the storage variables as well. This is due to variables not being in the correct order. So let's take a quick look. So here we have the external library. We have a variable called score on the external library and then we have a simple set score function that will set the score. Our vulnerable contract here has a reference to the external lib. It has an owner and then it has the score. And so when this gets constructed, we'll have a reference to the external lib, and then we're setting the owner to the message that sender, so the person creating the contract. And we just have the function called set score, which will delegate the call out to the library and call set score on the library. So this looks pretty, pretty harmless, but we'll see how an attacker can exploit this. The attacker contract is going to have a library uh, a reference to the library, a reference to the owner, and a reference to the score, so it's going to look exactly like the vulnerable contract here. And it's going to have a reference to the vulnerable contract, and so when the attacker calls attack, the vulnerable contract is going to call set score, and it's going to turn its address into a uint256. And so what happens is we're going to call set score, passing in pretty much the attacker's address. We call set score, it's going to delegate that call to the library, and the library is going to call set score, which looks harmless. However, again, because the call dele or delegate call passes the context, it's passing the storage variables in this order. So when it's calling set score, it's actually setting the library on the vulnerable contract. And by doing that, we now just took over the where the library points in the vulnerable contract. So now the library points to the attacker contract. And we're going to call vulnerable contract set score again, passing it in whatever number we want. Uh, because what's going to happen is we're going to call set score. It's going to delegate that call now to the attacker contract. 
and it's going to call the set score on the attacker contract. Again, passing in the context, we're going to say, hey, set score, and we're going to set the owner to the message as sender. This owner is actually the vulnerable contracts owner uh, because we're in the same order here. So let's see what that might take. Let's see what that might look like. Come over here, clean up my old ones. Uh, all right, so let's get to the library here, deploy that. Again, grab that address, go to the vulnerable contract. You get the idea. And go to the attacker, copy its address, paste. So if we come in here, look at the vulnerable contract, we can see that the library is pointing to 7EF2 and that the owner is 5B38. If we come in here and go to the attacker real quick and call attack, again, the t attack was successful. And if we come up here, we can see that the library address is now 358A, and that's 358 here. And if we look at the owner, it's also 358A, 358A. So you can see how just having the orders in a in the incorrect order or not following the same order as the external library can actually cause an exploit as well. To alleviate this, make sure the external libraries that you are using, that your contract has the same order of storage variables as the external library.